The last thing we are going to need before we can start patterning these spokes is the area of the hub that covers the bearings and the hole that's going to pass through the hub for the axle and the spacers. I'm going to roll back before step 17. I'm going to turn my sketches back on. Make sure that the hub cross-section layout and the hub bearing area layout for the front wheel are visible. Going to my front plane, what I want to do is take this sketch, which represents the area of the hub shell that covers the bearings, and revolve this rectangular area that's going to be glued onto the face of this flange. So starting a new sketch on the right plane, I'm going to copy this line, this line, this line, and this line using convert entities, hide, and then we'll trim the excess lines. And you'll often find on many hubs that this line is not horizontal, sometimes it is, but on some this kind of curves upward to sort of match the outer diameter of this part of the hub. So I'm going to delete this line. I'm going to draw a little arc here. Connect it to this point here. Just drag this up here. I'm going to turn my sketches on. And I'm going to make sure that this area is no smaller than this dimension indicated in the layout sketch. So I'll just make a coincident relation here. And this is going to be the shape of my bearing area for the hub. Now I can take this. I would probably want to add some dimensions to these. I'm going to take this and revolve this around this line. And I can add some fillets to this edge here to blend it into the flange and a fillet to this sharp edge here. Those fillets are steps 18 and 19 in your example file. Now we added this portion of the hub to the flange in the axle area separately rather than including it in the original revolve because this area is different on the rear wheel and on the rear wheel when we get to that configuration we're going to add a completely different structure. This is what we have so far. Now I'm going to skip completely over steps 20 through 25 because these are concerned with the rear wheel. These will be done in a later video. Step 26 is going to be to add the hole that passes through the hub that accommodates both the spacers and the axle. Let's turn our sketches back on again. Here's our bearing area. Here's our axle in our layout sketch. And this is a crude representation of all the spacers and lock nuts and bearing features that go into this area of the hub. And we are just simplifying this by making it a revolved cylinder. For now, what we are going to do is make a hole that will allow the axle to pass all the way through and also to accommodate this cylinder, which represents those spacers and nuts and bearings and things. So for step 26, we're going to start a new sketch on the right plane. We want to make a hole for the axle and a hole for the spacers. We will make it slightly bigger than those actual items. So we will take this line and offset it about a quarter millimeter. Take this line, offset it a quarter millimeter. And the spacer goes to this line here. So we will take this line here and offset it in the rightward direction a quarter millimeter as well. Hide the sketches. I'm going to draw a line emanating from the origin, horizontal. I'm going to trim this excess bit here. I'm going to stretch this out here. 
trim this, and then finally draw a vertical line here, and trim this. And this hole needs to be used for the rear wheel as well, which is going to have a wider spacer. So I'm going to take this line and just drag it way out here, which is well wider than the spacer on the rear wheel. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So this area here will carve out a hole when this is revolved for the spacers. This area here will carve out a hole for the axle. Let's go ahead and do that. Revolve cut. We're going to revolve around this line. That looks like we need to trim a couple more lines. So we need to add a line here at the origin as well. And then trim these excess bits off. Before I did not have a fully enclosed 2D area, now I do. I can go ahead and revolve this about this line. That gives me my hole through the hub. This portion accommodates the spacers and bearings and things. This portion accommodates the axle. For step 27, we simply add a little fillet of half a millimeter to this edge to give it a finished look. We will skip over step 28. That is a feature for the rear wheel. We finally have everything we need to make a full pattern of the spokes and also make the other half of the wheel. This wheel is going to have 28 spokes. We are going to be patterning these two spokes. These two spokes are also going to be mirrored to the other sides. That gives us a total of four spokes which are patterned and mirrored. So that means the total number of rotary pattern copies that we need to make is going to be 28 divided by 4 which means that we need to have seven instances when we pattern these two spokes around the central axis. Rolling to the top where I can see my axis one here, I'm going to go ahead and make a circular pattern, axis one, and what I want to do is pattern all the features associated with these two spokes, including the nipples and the buttons. This gets a little tedious. There's about eight different features that have to be patterned. There's two spokes. There's a button with its fillets, both on the outside and the inside. And then we have to make sure that we get the two features that make up each of the nipples. As I mentioned before, we need to make seven copies. That will give us 14 spokes on this side, and later on when we mirror to the other side, that will give us the other 14 spokes. There we have one half of our wheel, finally. Step 30 is going to be to mirror this entire body about the front plane. So using the mirror command, the body we're going to mirror is this body, plane is the front plane. And make sure that merge solids is left unmerged or unchecked for the time being. So now we finally have the entire set of spokes, but we see that the spokes from both sides, flange 1 and our new flange 2, are meeting at the same place, which we know cannot be allowed to happen. The spokes need to interleave between each other at the rim. What we need to do is take this copy that we made to create flange 2 and twist or rotate it so that the spokes on the second flange end up in between the spokes of the first flange. This is the reason why we did not merge it with the spokes in flange 1. So step 31A is go to insert, feature, move slash copy. If the feature manager looks like this when you first open it up and it says mate settings, go down to the bottom and click on translate rotate, which gives you the ability to move a body by translating it in the X, Y, or Z axis or to rotate it 
about an axis. The body we are going to twist is going to be the second body we created. We're going to rotate this about axis 1. Now we have to decide what the angle is we're going to rotate this. We have 360 degrees and 28 spokes. So we want to rotate this second body by 360 divided by 28. We want to let SOLIDWORKS do this work for us because this is going to be a weird fraction. Click that. We see, let's open that up again. We see that this is a weird decimal place that we would not want to have to calculate by going to the calculator and then typing in. So we let SOLIDWORKS do that for us. That will give us the exact perfect amount that this needs to rotate without any round off errors. Now we see that the spokes from the second half of the wheel have perfectly interleaved with the spokes on the first half so that these are all equally spaced out at the perimeter. We also notice that the spokes tend to clump together in clusters of four spokes. This is what happens on an actual wheel. The last step for this video then is going to be just simply to combine the two separate bodies the first half and the second half using the combine command which I have here on my feature manager or we can go to insert features combine and I will select this body and this body make sure add is the option selected now we have a single body the body's folder is gone we've just completed a major portion of this project a front wheel with 28 spokes. I hope you've been saving this file periodically. If not, save it now, probably under a new name. And in the next video, we're going to work on adding the rim and the axle and spacers. I think that'll be a simpler video than this one. You've just gotten through all the hard stuff.